Sun 6 TLU, still working on that Johnson Valiant, still drinking wine like a Viking, out battling old transmitters, changing capacitors, making life safer for hams all around the world. So let's say that you just returned home and you found yourself a classic Johnson Viking transmitter. The ones that have built-in VFOs, such as the Valiant, the Ranger, Navigator, or if you're lucky, a Johnson 500. If you do, the last thing that you want to do is just take that transmitter and plug it in and hop on the air and think everything's wonderful without checking some key things. And what I'm going to cover in this video is one of the most important things you should look at. So here it is, the Johnson Valiant. Now this transmitter and many of the other Johnson transmitters had this built-in VFO, which is a very desirable option. This makes sure that you're not crystal bound all the time, allows you to go anywhere you want on the frequency. And on this model, you can even go on 11 meters, right? So there's another attraction. However, this whole radio was built around that VFO option. And there it is. This is the top of the VFO. This is the side of the VFO, which is removable because there's two tubes in here. There's a 6AU6 oscillator and an OA2 voltage regulator that tries to maintain approximately 150 volts on that oscillator so that it's smooth and stable. Obviously, when Johnson built this VFO, the thing was flawless, like everything that Johnson built. However, after 50 to 60 years of operation, things wear out, all right? So one of the major complaints with the Johnson transmitters over time was frequency jump or frequency drift. You may find yourself chasing your signal around on the VFO. And a lot of guys got tired of it, so they would take off the crystal plug and hook up an external VFO and run the transmitter that way. Well, that's okay, but it really doesn't solve the problem. So what the issue is, is inside of that VFO is the OA2 voltage regulator. And that regulator has about 300 volts going to the regulator tube. And they have an 18K resistor in series with that tube to drop the voltage and then regulate it to 150 volts DC for the VFO operation, right? So the nickname for this resistor is called the Chernobyl resistor, okay? And you can find some fine reading on the web from WA1HLR, Timtron. He has some great articles about the failure of that resistor and how to repair it, okay? But the reason I'm presenting this video is to tell you that it's critical that you change that resistor or verify that it has been changed. Because even if your VFO is not working and you hook up an external VFO, guess what? That VFO is still powered and that resistor is in there breaking down and getting hotter and hotter. And eventually, it'll actually catch on fire. It'll bake the inside of your VFO. So you have to check this. So here's that side panel I was telling you about on the VFO. There's a lot of screws you have to remove. Some of them down here are not easy to get to. So it is quite the task to see if that original resistor has been changed. But you have to do it. So rather than going through all that, I'm going to show you an easy way that you can accomplish this task. Oh, uh oh. Oh boy. Hi, Marsh. Oh, were you filming? Well, I was. Oh. See you later. Bye. There's Marsha with the beer. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so over the years working on this equipment, I always wish that there was an easy way for me to determine if that resistor has ever been changed to save me all the effort of tearing those covers off and finding out it's already been done, all right? So I got looking at the transmitters in a little more detail and I found an access hole. And that access hole, let me zoom in and I'll show you where it's at, okay? Here we go, zoom de zoom If you look right there, you'll see an access hole, all right? That access hole is actually to allow you to set a screw that holds the coupler to the main VFO tuning knob on the front of the radio when you assemble it. But it also allows you to see inside 
of the VFO. But you can't do it with a flashlight and a little magnifying glass because you can't get in there. So I thought, what could I do to gain access to that little hole, see what's going on up there, and determine if there was anything wrong? And then I had this brilliant idea. Let me tell you what it is. All right, so I knew what I had to do. I had to find a way to look up inside that hole and see if that resistor had been changed. And if it hadn't, then obviously I knew what I had to do. So I thought, well, how in the heck could I find something where I could look up in there and have it lit up so I could determine if that resistor has been hot or if it's the original? So I thought, you know, maybe I could talk to somebody that's a professional that does something like this for a living. So I consulted my doctor, right? And I said, hey, you know, I told him what I was up to. I said, I need to look up in this hole and determine if there's anything wrong. And if there is, I need to remove it. And he said, you know, that's funny, Terry. He said, because that's what I do for a living. I look in holes with a device like this. And he says, I look up in there. And if I see something wrong, I clip it out. And then everything's wonderful, right? I thought, well, that's the same procedure I need to do, but obviously not on a human. I need to do it on a radio. And so he said, well, guess what? You can borrow this. I thought, super cool. So here we are. And I have the little scope. And the only question is, is has it been used before it went in this radio? No, it doesn't appear as though. All right. So here we go, people. Journey to the center of the Valiant through this little orifice, shall we say, underneath is the 18K resistor original? Well, it sure is. Getting ready for the Chernobyl event. So obviously we're gonna have to pop the side cover and replace it, but that is the original 18K two watt resistor that was put in back in the day. So it's time for me to change her. Here's that aluminum cover I told you about. So obviously I take tubes out so I don't damage them in the process. Okay, just remember where they went. And normally there'd be screws down here near the bottom, but those are missing. So somebody's already been in here at one time. Um, then you have these little standoff studs that are pop riveted onto the cover and underneath there's some quarter inch little nuts that you have to take off, all right? But the first step is get these screws out. I've got some really nice long screwdrivers for that purpose. Get these screws out. Remove this little light feed here, okay? And then you'll have full access to the VFO. But it still isn't that easy to do. I find that you have to do most of this with a pair of long nose pliers and tweezers. Right, so I've got the cover loose. There we go. Right down there is the 18K resistor. I'll zoom in so you can see it. Oh, we've got something else going on over here. Hold on a minute. What do we got going on? Hey, look at there. Some... So there it is. The 18K resistor going up to the OA2 voltage regulator tube. As you can see, it is buried in there, but it is replaceable. You just gotta take your time. And what I replace them with is this 20K 5 watt resistor. It's a wire wound type. And what's nice about this resistor is it's not gonna age and change value and overheat. The worst case scenario on this wire wound type is the wire's gonna break internally and the resistor will fail. Saving this OA2 tube from torching this entire upper deck in the VFO. Like I said, this is a highly recommended procedure to do on any of the Johnson transmitters of the building VFO. To make this procedure a little easier, uncouple this little guy here and pull your exciter shaft out of the way. All right, It's easy enough to put it back in but this allows you full access, or at least the best access, to that resistor. 
So as you can see, it's a pretty tight area. So the first thing I do is get some wire cutters in here and I just clip the old one out. All right, it's gonna be pretty difficult for me to show you guys this in detail since my hands will cover everything I'm doing. But I'll at least tell you step by step how to get that new resistor in. So there is the old original resistor and you can see I clipped the leads really close to the body leaving pigtails here on the terminal board and on the base of the tube. So what I'm going to do is make little hooks and I'm going to solder the new resistor in on those pigtails because I cannot get to that terminal board and wrap it around like it was stock. It's just not doable without pulling off this entire housing and to do that you get to pull the front face off the radio too. It's really not an easy job. Now one word of warning if you're working on one of these do not take these screws out and try to lift the top off the VFO because if you do you see these little adjusters they got these little fancy copper springs if you pop that top all those springs go boing over the place you'll never get them back in to ensure a good connection take an exacto knife and clean the corrosion off of these old leads so that you get a really good connection I believe that I might be able to remove this lead from the tube pin so up here I can start out fresh but down here I'm gonna to have to hook it in on the new 20k resistor All right, so the worst part is getting the lead off that way too but look at there use a pair of tweezers she'll pop right off I got very lucky on that one. Here's the 20K. Now I've cut this lead and I made a little hook. So I'm going to get in here and I'm going to swing him up into place. Get that lead back into that tube pen. Alright, so you may have a problem clearing the hole in the tube, so take some solder wick. Get him in there and I'll pull that old solder out of the tube pen. Kill it. All right, so it's very difficult, people. There was this ground runner coming up, and it's right in your way, but behind it is the pen that you need to solder to. I've got the new resistor hooked in there in place. Now I need to bring my soldering iron back here, solder it in. So I'm gonna let this thing hang and get her in. All right, so this thing's really being a pain in the keister. So I'm taking a weller and I bent the tip to be able to reach around that corner. And hopefully, solder this dumb thing in. Got it. All right, so I used my solder as a pointer. You can see what I did is I made two little J hooks on these leads. So that's a solid mechanical connection. Next I'll solder that. The upper connection is done. The resistor is in a great position. This is going to be a success. Okay. Can you see down there? Mm -hmm. Come in your position. <laughs> okay. That's good. Uh, all right. Yeah? I guess. No, Go. Come, come down over here. Come down over here. I can cut all this out. All right, here we go. That guy in there. Here we are. New resistor is in place. Before you seal that VFO cage up, get a meter, hook up to the other side of that resistor that's going to the bottom of the tube, and make sure the voltage regulator is working. Otherwise, guess what? You get to do this all over again. So, boom, Valiant's on. 148.4, that's coming off the OA2, and that is coming off of our new resistor. Mission accomplished. So as you can see, this is a pretty intense operation on a Valiant. And without the proper tools, it can be a real pain in the keister. Uh -huh. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh -huh. See you again. <laughs> 73s. 
from D-Lab Electronics, N6TLU, at the helm. Testing one, two, three, four. <laughs> 